and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne, and this is the sermon part of RT Ministries. This week, uh, the sermon comes in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. Um, and the title is, People Are Leaving the Faith. Now, the Bible is clear when, when I say people are leaving the faith. They're not true, saved people. According to 1 John, it says, they, they left us because they weren't part of us. So anybody leaving the faith or leaving churches going back to their life or going into some cult or some false teacher, it just means they weren't part of us. They're never truly saved people. I, and I remind everybody out there that the churches now are full of unsaved people. You have unsaved people in the audience. There's a lot of unsaved ministers, which is scary to me. I mean, you got pastors that weren't even called to do it, and they, they haven't a clue about the Lord, and they're out there supposedly teaching you got elders and deacons boards that are full of unsaved people. So it's, it's becoming saturated now with unsaved people. But this text here talks about why they depart. You know, the reason, some of the reasons they depart. And some of the, some of the cults out there, what they teach. So it's just good truth for all of us true Christians. True born-again Christians. Alright, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. Verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. All right, the Holy Spirit, Paul was writing this, telling Timothy, look, in the Spirit says in the later times, and we certainly are in the later times now, that everything's crumbling, the church is... Uh, Visit, the visible church is pretty corrupted right now. Now, the true church of Jesus Christ isn't, but the visible one that people see is, is corrupted. Some will do, it says in the Spirit, the Spirit says in later times, and the later times is, any, is basically when Jesus Christ went back up into the heaven. It's from that point till now, it's a later times. He can come back at any time. It says here, some in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits. All cults, all false teachers, they have devoted themselves to deceitful spirits and doctrines or teachings of demons. And what are some of the, you know, there's the, the TV is full, I mean, full of, you know, the works movement, the miracles and, and signs and wonders and all of the false teachers out there, all the women pastors, you know. By the way, if, if, if you walk into a church with a woman pastor, I would turn around and run. Because that woman can't even follow one, a few simple principles in the Bible. If she can't follow that, don't. A woman is not supposed to have authority in a church. So run. Um, so they devoted themselves to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Sp you know, there's... People in a church, in church settings, and even teach in churches that uh, spirits come and give them another message. And I've heard this over and over and over on TV and, and through other people that they've, they've had visions of Jesus Christ. And, or they've seen an angel and the angel come and told them something different. Then they follow a path of what they told them. Listen, stick to the Bible, stick to it and it alone. There's nothing new. This is it. The canon is closed. Revelation is it. There's nothing beyond Revelation. There's nothing new that has to be added to the Bible. But here it says they devoted themselves. So we'll just take an instance like uh, the Mormons were started. Joseph Smith, he had an angel visit him. He devoted everything to that angel and what he said. He got the Book of Mormon and, and the Pearl of Great Price, I believe. Uh, he got all that from an angel. And he devoted himself to the Mormon teaching through that angel and what he, he uh, told him. <laughs> If anybody tells you anything different, run. Run, run, run. These are all doctrines of demons. These are The demonic world is, is starting a church of its own. It's going to culminate in the end times of the false religion of the day. So run, because these people have devoted themselves to demons. There's a lot of people in the pulpit that have devoted themselves to demons because everything that comes out of their mouth is false doctrine. It's a false god. It's a false Christ. So you've got to be careful who you... Uh, Get your teaching from, who you go to church, who you're under. Be careful. If, if they're not telling you the truth, run. Verse 2. 
through insincerity of liars who are, whose consciences are seared. Now look at all these people who devoted themselves to demons, the doctrine of demons. It says, through the insincerity of liars who consciences, these people, their consciences are seared. Yet people go to church underneath them and try to supposedly get truth from them. How can you get truth from somebody if their conscience is seared? They don't have no barometer left. They don't have a, a gauge to tell them what's right and wrong anymore. They're listening to demons and they're, they have no idea what's wrong. And they're, they're, they're taking everybody in, in the church and leading everybody astray. Don't follow somebody with a conscience seared. And, and again, these are people who have devoted themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons and they have seared consciences. Verse 3, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving, but those who believe and know the truth. Now here, in context, it's saying who forbid marriage and require abstinence from food that God created. Now the, the only one that comes to mind to me is the Catholic Church. They forbid their priests to be married, to be married which is nowhere in the Bible. And they require absence from certain foods. And here it says that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. They put laws and they put restrictions. And outside, from the outside, there's restrictions. Restrictions look holy. We'll just like to say a nun. A nun or a priest. From the outside, you look at a nun, they abstain from sex, which looks good from the outside. I mean, it looks pure from the outside. And they abstain from getting married, which looks good like they've devoted their total life to God. All this stuff has an appearance of holiness. But right here it says, who forbid marriage. In the Bible, God put marriage in for, for a blessing. It isn't a curse. It certainly isn't to be abstained from. And they require absence from food. All these rules God didn't come up with, man did. And the corrupt Catholic Church... You know, God revealed the corruption of the Catholic Church. He revealed it through all the priests and all the... The sexual sin from all the priests. God revealed it to the whole world, and what the world do with it? They just kind of, oh, you know, everybody sins. And see, that's the mentality of today. You know, you can have priests touching boys, and you can have in a in a way that's so ungodly. And then the church covers it up, and the the people still go to the. I don't understand why people still go to a Catholic church. The corruption has been shown, and people still go. But I, I people go because they're corrupt. That's why. The whole system is just a terrible, terrible system. And by the way, for a woman to be a nun, you would have to push aside the motherly instinct that God give every woman. So I, it just makes no sense to me. Again, it has the appearance of holiness, but it's not holy because they're making up rules that aren't in the Bible. You know, the Bible does say some people are are born with a to stay single. But most people out there have an urge to be married, you know. So there's going to be problems if you, if you try to put laws to people that isn't in their nature, like a priest, you know, can't get married, you know, they're, they have to abstain from all this stuff and they can't, they can't do it. So it comes out in other ways. So, and, and again, God showed the corruption of that system and people still... You know, the, that system is so corrupt that I, I just don't, I don't understand because none of it matches the Bible. The, the whole tradition above the Bible. Now everything God created is, everything God created is supposed to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. If you know the truth, everything is at your disposal. You can eat whatever you want and nothing, nothing corrupts you. You can't, Jesus even said, you can't, whatever you eat doesn't corrupt you. It, whatever you eat goes in you and goes out. It's what comes out of your mouth that corrupts you. So that made all food good. You're not any more holy if you stop eating meat on a Friday. It absolutely does absolutely nothing for you. Verse 4. For everything created by God, everything created by God is good. Isn't that nice? Everything he created is good from trees to animals to us. Everything is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. If you receive anything in this world with thanksgiving, whether it's food Whatever it is, if you receive it for Thanksgiving, eat it, enjoy it. Marriage is to be enjoyed. Sex is to be enjoyed in a marriage. I mean, there's everything God made is good. 
Verse 5, for it is made holy by the word of God in prayer. And again, everything God has made is made holy by his word because he gave it to us. Everything he made is good. People are leaving the faith and they are following people who listen to demons and they have doctrines of demons and their consciences are seared. They have no more ability to tell the truth than anybody, any other unsaved person in this, on this planet. And the, the, the doctrines are listened to as close to the truth, but it's not the truth. They're, they're, they come back into church, and especially pastors who are not saved and have followed doctrines of demons, they preach a different Jesus and a different God, and then they lead more astray. But people are leaving the true faith. And I can tell you from personal experience, not too many people put up with the truth anymore. They won't put up with just the Bible. They, they just think people are so narrow when they just follow the Bible. When they, don't, when they don't fall for the garbage of psychology and all the other ologies out there, and they don't fall for, for evolution and all the other junk that's being taught out there that does not match the Bible, and they just stick with the Bible, people are leaving the faith. But the false people are leaving. The true people... The true people that listen to this, this is, this is uh, for, the true, for the true saved people out there, the true church of Jesus Christ is growing and it's strong. What you see out there is a false one. All the garbage out there from inside churches that claim to be followers of Christ, the TV shows that claim to be followers, that stuff is all mostly doctrines of demons. And you'll know the truth when you walk into a church. If you've got somebody telling the truth, you'll know it. If you're saved, you'll know it. If you're unsaved, you can be false for anything out there. And you'll, you'll find something that you can tolerate. Again, people are, leaving, people are leaving the faith, but it's only because they were never part of the faith. It's okay, this is what's going to happen in the end times. In the end times, you're going to be meeting in smaller and smaller and smaller groups, the true saved people. So keep hard. Jesus Christ overcome the world, right? <laughs> and you will too. If you're saved, you'll overcome the world. You'll just meet with smaller people, a smaller group of people. So keep the faith. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.